Hello everybody and welcome back to another deck guide. This time we're going to be looking at a Nilfgaard deck, um, an Imperial Formation deck at that. And it makes use of the likes of Damien Stefan as a very greedy um, sort of Nilfgaard deck which allows you to, you know, potentially um, put a lot of pressure on your opponents, bleed them around two, and have a lot of points in the long round three if it should come to that. Um, that being said, this deck is originally made by, I believe it was Green Knight. And we're going to have a look at it card by card and discuss what everything is for. And then we're going to test it out in a few games, see how we do. So, first things first, Imperial Formation, what this leader ability allows us to do is boost an ally unit by 2, charge 4, so you can do it 4 times. And once all charges have been exhausted, move a soldier from the top of your deck, or from your deck to the top of your deck. Um, so basically, this allows you to boost up cards such as Damien, Stefan, even Morale, and help put them out of removal range so your opponent can't kill them. So, it's important to note that these cards are very very risky but with this leader ability it mitigates the risk and makes them very very safe and a lot of points should they go through so let's have a look at cards like damien um Dela tour order so you can't use it on the turn you play it you have to wait a turn um refresh your leader ability um if it's disabled um so basically what this does is if you maybe you play your damien then you use two one or two leader charges to keep the damien out of removal range and then your opponent can't kill it, and then when it comes back to your turn, you can finish using your leader ability charges, and then you can click on Damon, and you'll get your leader ability back again, which is a lot of points, making this essentially a 13-point card, um, and it also allows you to, as a form of carryover, um, you know, recharge your leader ability, and that does give you, that can carry over within to the next round, um, potentially, in a way. Also, this allows you to, you know, once you play your Damien, then you can refresh your leader charges, and you can use those charges then to to boost up Stefan or other threats, and cause your opponent a lot of nu a nuisances um, in whatever round it is, and allows you to put a lot of pressure on round two, which is what this deck wants to be doing against certain matchups, is winning round one, pushing round two, and using the likes of Stamina and Stefan. I'll explain that to you a bit why you want to do this in round two quite often. Um, next thing I have is Royal Decree, and this just allows us to have a bit more consistency finding um, the key cards in our deck. That being said, Royal Decree, one of the added benefits of it in this deck is we do run Yennefer's Invocation. So a lot of decks right down the current meta run cards like Rodeo. So you can very often um, use Yennefer's Invocation in round two or three or whatever um, to steal your opponent's uh, no, Rodea, Yigern, some kind of threat, maybe something like Falibo, and then you can also, in the same turn or round rather, you can play Royal Decree and get it out of your deck should you need to. Uh, the next thing I have is Rodea, and this is one of those cards that you should be seeing pretty much everywhere on ladder. This is one of the strongest cards, if not the strongest card in Gwent right now. Um, if your starting deck has no duplicates, uh, melee spawn a, strateg a stratagem of this faction and range row um, spawn a neutral stratagem so you get to see or you get to create rather create a neutral stratagem so basically this is a 13 point card with a lot of utility and the fact that your stratagems are uninteractive means you can pretty much keep those stratagems for whenever you want uh, if you put up melee row you get a lock stratagem three point damage that locks an enemy unit which can be useful in certain scenarios or range row um, you get a couple of neutral strategies. You can get a Purify, you can get a Poison, you can get a 3-point Dagger, you can get um, a Magic Lamp for 5 points, or a Tactical Advantage, or even an Enchanted Armor for some carryover in some niche scenarios. So, very good value on Rodea, and like I said, because you run things like Invocation, you can potentially Invocate your opponent's Rodea, and then play 2 Rodeas, which is just insane value. Um, the next thing we have is Stefan's Skeleton, and this is another one of those very greedy cards that, if it is unanswered, it is a ridiculous amount of points when combined with the right um, support, which is going to be Bribery and Royal Decree. Um, so what this card does is another order card, so you have to wait a turn before its ability becomes active. Spawn and play a copy of the last tactic card you already played this round. Now, it's only in this round, so keep that in mind. And what is nice about this is Bribery is a tactic, a very strong tactic at that, although a little bit... You know, on the RNG side of things, it is still a very powerful card and allows you to replay it with Stefan, which can potentially give you two win cons of your opponent and be a ridiculous amount of points. Um, this card can very often just be game winning um, in itself. So very, very threatening card. And like I said, because your leaderability ability boosts cards up, you can boost Stefan out of removal range and make it very, very difficult, if not impossible, for your opponent to answer. The next thing we have is Ramon. Spawn and play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your hand and give it to armor. So we do run a couple of soldiers, North Guardian Knight, um, Tortoise, Pikeman, um, Crossbow, 
even Alba Spearmen and Recruit. So there's a couple of soldiers you can create. This is a nice card to just put a bunch of points on the board very quickly, very easily. And also, it's a good way to sometimes win round one. Sometimes you need a bunch of points quickly in round one to, you know, force your opponent out. And this can be that card. Also nice to put pressure on your opponent round two. Maybe you win round one, you play this card for just 11 point play potentially or more. And, you know, just put a bit of pressure on your opponent and give yourself breathing room where you can follow that up with your Damien or Stefan. Um, next thing we have is Yennefer's Invocation. And this is one of the strongest Northguard cards. And like I said, combo is quite nice with, that, with Royal Decree and Roderick. Um, so basically, place an enemy unit or an artifact on top of your deck. So basically what you do with this card is anything on your opponent's side of the board. And this is a stratagem, but pretty much any artifact or unit you can just, you know, delete from existence and put on top of your deck. So if your opponent plays a Yeager, no problem, invocated. If your opponent plays um, some kind of scenario and you can't deal with it otherwise, no problem, invocated. So invocation just gives you a way to just delete something from existence and then steal it for yourself, which is insane value with the likes of Royal Decree, especially if you can invocate your opponent's Rodea um, or some other high base strength unit with a good deployability. So very, very strong card in this deck. Next thing I have is Afan. And this has some very good synergy with our leader ability. If this card basically reads, if moved to the top of the deck, summon this unit to the melee row. So basically, if this is card is put on top of your deck, it comes out to the board immediately. And our leader ability says, boost an allied unit by two, charge four. Once all charges have been exhausted, move a soldier from your deck to the top. This is a soldier. So in other words, if you put this card on top of your deck, it'll automatically come out to the board, which means that it makes your leader ability five points stronger. So whenever you use up your leader charges, you can click on this card and it will come out of your deck um, to the board, essentially giving your leader five more points, which is very, very threatening. Uh, the next thing I have is Morale, and this is another very dangerous card that your opponent has to deal with. And if they can't, then you are getting a lot of value with it. And again, we can boost up with our leader ability to keep it out of removal range. Basically, what this card does is deploy poison enemy units and then order, so you have to wait a turn and you can put another poison on, which means you can potentially just kill anything with this card. So, like I said, our leader ability does allow us to keep this out of removal range and this card can be a lot of value. It also has some synergy in the deck because we do run a couple of other poison cards, so this card does synergize with that as well. Next thing we have is Bribery and this, is, this card is quite often the bane of everyone's existence when it comes to Gwent. I'm sure you've all seen this card at some point. Um, create and play a unit from your opponent's starting deck. Now this can create even opponent's gold cards. So the thing is, gold cards in your opponent's deck can often be very, very high provision, very high value cards. And if you can create one of those gold cards with bribery, only eight provisions, you could potentially create your opponent's Philippa, Falibor, um, Draug, or maybe their own Stefan or Damien, or their Redea, or whatever. You can create an opponent's win condition for only eight provisions, and you can do it again because of Stefan. So you can do it twice, which gives you a, a two shots at creating an opponent's win condition, which is both frustrating and insane at the same time. Very, very... Uh, the best way I can put this card is it's a very frustrating card, but I mean... It is what it is. That's what Nilfgaard is basically. <laughs> that is basically what Nilfgaard is right now. Just create your opponent's win condition and play their deck against them. And that is what bribery is for in this deck. Um, the next thing we have is Menno um, Cohorn. And this card lets you um, play a tactic from your from your deck, which means you can use it to tutor out your bribery or royal decree, um, or maybe even a tourney joust if you need to. And just good value tutor. Um, the next thing I have is, is um, the Cupbearer. And this card is an Assimilate. In other words, when you create a card, which you do have with the likes of Bribery and Ramon, even Invocation helps you play a card from your that's not from your starting deck. So basically, whenever you play a card that's not from your starting deck, it'll trigger this card, make it boost up by one. But that's not the main use of this card. The main use is Melee Poison a unit. So you can use that in combination with um, things like Fangs of the Empire, King Cobra, um, or even Morale. And another utility is range. You can purify unit, which is quite useful sometimes because one of the few ways your opponents can answer Damien or Stefan is by locking them. And purify allows you to remove a lock, which means that with Cupbearer, you can potentially, you know, counter your opponent's counter in a way. And that's pretty good value in this deck. Um, the next thing I have is Roderick. And this again acts like a budget Royal Decree. And basically another nice thing is it combos quite nice invocation because you can use this to get out um, a gold out of your deck should you need to especially if you invocate it and put in your in your deck and it's round three and you can't get your that gold otherwise this card allows you to access that or maybe get a very important gold out that you might need um next thing i have is north guardian knight boost an enemy unit by two 
um, which you typically don't want to do, but because you do have things like poison, um, you don't mind boosting up your opponent's units sometimes. Also, invocation means you don't mind boosting up something if you're going to invocate it anyway. And also, if you play this card as your first play when your opponent has no units on their side of the board, you then don't have to boost anything, and this just plays as a proactive um, 7 for 5. Next thing you have is Tortoise, and this is boost an enemy with the most power by 3 if this armor is destroyed. So this card has 2 armor. If your opponent wants this to boost their units, they're going to have to do 2 damage to it, essentially. And if it does boost up the tallest unit they have, then it's playing right into Poison and also maybe Invocation. So quite often your opponent doesn't even want to damage this anyway because it plays into that. Also, it's a soldier. Both these are soldiers, which means it's good targets for Ramon. Um, next thing you have is Old Pikeman. Every ally turn on turn end damage a random enemy unit on the melee row by one and this is just a nice engine sometimes the next thing we have is bomb heaver this is, you can use the destroyed artifact good for dealing with scenarios diviner purify units again this is very similar to cupbearer but lower provision and it can't poison but it does again allow you to unlock a unit or purify units should you need to especially if your daemon or stefan get locked um, next thing we have is crossbow and this is damage ending by two barricade in other words while this card has armor which does come with two armor then this card will damage the enemy unit by one every time you play a soldier and there are a couple of soldiers in the deck so there's plenty of ways to do that um tourney jars damage enemy unit by four if i shield ignore shield basically and also if you play proactively on your side board you can boost up unit by four um bangs the empire give an enemy unit poison which again synergizes quite nice with all the other poison cards on the deck i was spearman damage aim by one increase damage by one each for each adjacent soldier another soldier tag for ramon potentially magnet division another soldier every ally turn on turn end boost salt by one if this is the only car on this row so you don't want to be putting this next to other units recruit boost and ally soldier by three pretty simple king cobra poison enemy unit pretty simple um hunter melee give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns range lock pretty simple um that's pretty much the deck and like i said one important thing and i'm going to give you guys a bit of a tip when it comes to playing this deck if you want or some matchups where your opponent might have an answer for Damien or Stefan, think about for example Syndicate. They can answer your Damien or Stefan with something like Graydon, leader with Graydon, sorry. Or maybe someone like Northern Realms. They can answer your Damien or Stefan with something like um Redea with the shield boost on their Unseas to kill your Damien or your Stefan. So one way you can play around that is by at the start of round two, let's say you're playing in Syndicate, you can open up with Damien. Your opponent won't be able to answer they're playing Syndicate unless they want to play Leader and Graydon to kill it. Now, if they do that, you're fine with that. If they play the Leader ability to answer your Damien, you go, okay, fine, I'll go card down, but now you've lost your Leader and your Graydon. Good luck for the rest of the game. Um, against Syndic or against Northern Realms, for example, they can't play Redea and their Unsays on the same turn to kill your Damien. So you can open up with Damien and, again, if they play Leader into... Um, and say as plus for day, then you go, okay, well, I just got your biggest combo out of you and your leader ability. I don't mind going a card down. Um, so that's one of the big strengths of this deck. If you push them in round two with your with Damien and Stefan, sometimes your opponent can't answer it without over committing to round two. So in some matchups, specifically Northern Realms and Syndicate, it's a really good idea to push in round two with these cards. Um, it's also a very good idea to push in round two. Um, against Squirtle because Squirtle is a very very strong round three and so typically against Squirtle you want to win round one and push round two so quite often um, in the, with this deck you want to be pushing round two quite a bit um, there are some matches like other Nilfgaard matchups you don't need to push round two specifically but maybe you do anyway um, but there are some matches where you don't need to push round two but specifically against Squirtle, Northern Realms and Syndicate you want to win round one and push round two anyway let's jump into a few games see how we do and see how the deck does all right, so we're against Mystic Echo Squared. And this is one of those matches where you really want to win round one. So we're going to try our best to make sure we win round one because it's very, very important that we do so. Um, Bomb Heaver doesn't really do much against um, against Mystic Echo. They don't normally run any type of artifacts. So I'm going with the Bomb Heaver. Um, and then I guess we can be Mulligan this away. So we definitely, definitely need to win round one. If we don't win round one, Long running against Harmony is not ideal for us. Well, less than f that's an understatement, I guess you could say. So we'll start then off with the Mega Division. We'll put it Range Row because we are probably going to put the Pikeman onto the Melee Row potentially. Um, we do need to be careful though because I put this Melee Row, I could disable two engines in one shot with the likes of a um, a Hawk. We need to probably try further than that. 
So we might wait a while before we do something like that. Play the North Guardian Knight first, bait out the movement, and then decide to play a Pikeman or not. So let's see. Okay, so he plays this. Um... I guess we'll go ahead and do that, and potentially kill it off with maybe pikeman things. If he's got a movement, he'll play it now most likely to move this. Then I guess you can play a pikeman, because the movement will be out of the way. And then we need to start trying to poison this, because this needs to get going. We don't want that on the board at all. And we need to win on one, very, very important. Okay, so no movement for now, that's nice. Um, in that case, I guess we'll just play this. Yes. Hope he doesn't ping the armor. Just ping the armor. <laughs> and then I guess next turn we're playing the poison. Poison needs to kill this Percival ASAP. Mm, okay, so he plays the Merlega. Interesting, interesting. interesting. Um, I'll, I would love to kill that. I don't really have a way to kill it right now. Um... I think for now we'll do this, boost that up, and then start picking up morale. If he does play the Etril, we play the morale, and then we can start putting pressure on the Percival. Um, so there's the Etril, sure, we'll this. We can't pass here, because if we pass here, we are in a lot of trouble. So go ahead and do this, and we'll boost this up to 7 so that he can't kill it with um, the likes of his potential um, rebuke. Nature's Rebuke. So we'll do that. If he passes here, we do end up winning the round, which is good for us because we can't ever hope to win a long round against Mystic Echo. Um, so the next thing we'll do, if he does end up purifying or killing um, somehow this, we can just use the um, Cupbearer to finish this off. One way or another, we should get a poison through here. Um, opponent connection lost. Will he recover? There he does. Okay. As I mentioned, we will be able to purify this person. We will be able to kill this person for one way or the other. If he purifies it, we can kill it. If he kills by morale, we can kill it. Either way, we can kill it. And that's a lot of points. It's a very, very big point swing. Um, okay, so he purifies it. Doesn't matter. We can still kill it. So we'll go ahead then and do that now. And that does mean that we can start threatening to win on even now, which is very good for us, obviously, if we can. If we win on even, we're pretty happy. Um, the question is, what do we want to play next? I guess we may have to play a Roderick and just... I don't know, hope for a Ramon or something. That would be pretty ideal. Or Royal Decree, that also works. And ooh, very late waters, that's good for us. Such a late water, it's not going to do a whole lot for him then. So we'll play the Roderick now. Um, Ramon is perfectly fine. I'll take this Ramon. And that will allow us to put a lot of pressure on him, which is great for us. And again, that created a card, which means the Cup Bear did get boosted from that, which is good for us. And this waters isn't doing a whole lot for him because he played this very late in the round, which means. He doesn't have a whole lot of tags left, and there comes the Skirmisher, barely getting my head, and he kills that, which isn't the greatest thing for him in the world. We'll do this, um, and then if he plays another card, maybe we just take it with um, Invocation onto a goal that he might play here, and we'll see. Okay, that will block Harmony. Um, I'm going to play the Bribery now. I guess we can always Royal Decree out something with um, Stefan on that later, so that's still okay. We can just take the figures, figures isn't bad. And again, this does proc the simulator on that, so it's no plus one. And if he does play Oak, we just invocate and win the run anyway, which is nice. Call the forest onto what? Barnabas, okay. I'm gonna do some math here and see if, if invocation will do it, because we do want to try to take this round and we're not even. I guess we have leader charges, so we should always be able to do it, yeah. Um, no matter what, he do stuff. Okay, so we need to do 10 points. Um, I guess we can just do this in one leader charge, should be fine. And that lets us win on even, which is great. Um, we do use two leader charges, however, and we do um, use some, some decent cards, but winning on even is extremely valuable, especially against Mystic Echo. We did get out some good cards out of him too. We got out all of his carryover, so not too bad for us. We're looking now specifically for Damien, um, Rodea, Royal Decree, Stefan. We're kind of looking for a couple of cards. Obviously this is kind of bad, but it's fine, I suppose. Mulligan away this. Um, Mulligan that next one, I guess. And Menno is 20 just. <laughs> um, 
I guess we can just do... Uh, if I play Royal Decree now, then my Stefan's kind of bad. Um, but yeah, I probably do want to pressure him regardless. So, uh, maybe we can play a Stefan here. Maybe Royal Decree a Stefan and then get Damien out of our deck. Is that going to play everything? Uh... Maybe I just play a Stefan here and then I'll roll the Kree out of a dare. Put some pressure on like that. We use one leader charge here and then huh. we'll play the Menno onto. Um, we'll play the roll the Kree again onto the Redea, then that of our deck, and then we'll see. Okay, that's very low. Maybe we can actually be 2 0 in here. We got Dead of Fallen in here, maybe not. <laughs> so we'll play the Stefan again, roll the Kree out. I think I'm just going to take the Redea. And then. To fear, there is nothing. Fine, actually, just to kill this. Then we'll play the Menno onto the Twenty Jars just for some practice points. And honestly, he's going to play Leader Ability. If he doesn't play Leader Ability, he's he's in a lot of trouble. So we'll do this, and then we'll probably just pass here. I'm not going to play this five point card from him. It's brick. There's Leader Ability. That's great. Getting leader ability out of him now is pretty important because his leader ability is very, very powerful. And we get a pass on it anyway. So we got leader ability out of him. We got our card up. He should have pretty much nowhere to win round three. No matter how badly we draw, we should always be able to win round three here. We can draw oak, we can draw whatever he wants. We should always win no matter how badly we draw. We still have part of our leader left and we have a Damon still in the deck we can top deck into. And that's just a lot of points if we do find that. But even if we top deck terribly, we should always win here. Okay, that's okay. okay. <laughs> Speaking of top decking terribly, uh, Mali gonna you, and then this is kind of used. Well, Proxus it's worth five, I guess. Poison's worth nothing right now. Ah, boy, okay, so we top deck pretty badly, but we should always still be fine here. Yeah. Um, so we'll start off then with the Diviner, and then we'll play this to proc the Diviner. At least, so this plays for five. Um, this is worth three. <laughs> we literally top deck. As bad as humanly possible, but eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Last card's probably Oak, but we beat Oak. It's all good. Man, we top decked horrendously here, but it's all good. It's all good. So we'll do that. Boost that up. Put this top of the deck as we come out. And there you have it. Um, so, game one against Mystic Echo. Not too bad. Let's go again. Okay, so we're against a huh? Northguard Mirror. However, our opponent is playing again. with um, I can't remember the name of this leader below tiers even. Um, tactical decisions. So he's not running. It's not going to be an exact mirror. It's going to be somewhat different. Different. Um, this bomb here could be valuable. They often run um the masquerade ball scenario in this deck. So I might want to keep this. I'll keep it for now. Um, maybe just play. And then again, he's not going to play it in round one. Maybe it's worth keeping. Um, Mulligan away, what, Tony Joss maybe? Uh, eh, no, Tony Joss could be useful. There might be some engines to kill. Um, hmm. Poison, we have poison here. Soldier, we've got soldiers. I don't know, maybe Mulligan away this. Mulligan away lock. Eh. Alright, so we've got a proactive play. This is our proactive play. We'll probably just open up with the North Guardian Knight. And then... Because he's got no units on his side of the board, so he can't, can't actually do anything with that. So, not, nothing to boost up. Okay, so he plays the um, Mega Division. I guess we'll just go ahead and, and 20 just that. And then we'll see what we play next. We do have poisons. I don't like using my Cupbearer right now because of the fact that it can purify, which could be useful for... Shoop. Okay. What are you going for? What, Shoop Charm? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Shoop Charm right off the bat. Uh, he gets 13, so only a 9 point shoop, that's fine. That's okay then. Alright, so I guess we'll just play the Pikeman, I suppose. And we'll proc the... Um, it's not, well, I'll Stratagem, and this should give me a pass, honestly. I seriously doubt he can deal with it and get ahead of me in one turn. You get Shoop out of him round one, which is nice. He plays the SCA, he's playing the SCA deck, okay, that's fine. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and poison this. We can win round one, we're pretty happy. So, an SCA deck with Shoop probably playing with Cynthia then too, I would imagine. And then we can, I 
Oh, he has cancer and a piece of I shall be your eyes, my lord. On my roll. Uh, my yeah, trade, okay. I mean, I yeah, that's a little artist. bit annoying, not gonna lie. Um, let's just invocate the morale back. Well. Pretty good Cantarilla. Sure, we'll invocate it back, and then we'll play the Cupbearer. That's a little bit annoying. Shh. Whatever. So he puts my morale on top. <laughs> So he's definitely playing a Snorri deck then, absolutely playing a Snorri deck. We have the bomb here for the Snorri, so that's okay. Um, let's go ahead then and play the poison on this, and hopefully it wins me the round. Um, yeah, a little bit annoying so far, but it's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> you got to keep this though to answer a lock, because Northgard has a lot of locks, and he might have to lock my Stefan, which would be pretty bad for me. He does have Invocation too for my Damien and my Stefan, which is also kind of... Scary, but we do have a bomb here for his scenario, which is nice. Yeah, that's his fangs. Stefan's good. Got a decent hand. We could potentially push with this hand, depending on what he plays. Um, I'm going to definitely keep all of this. Quite good cards. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to push here. I don't want to go into long run against Snorri deck, especially the ones running probably poisons. I'm going to start off with this, then I'm going to play my Damien. If he invocates, we have Stefan, probably play the... Stefan too. Kind of want to force out some of his cards. This is my morale. We know he has got my morale in hand. Um, if he plays morale here, I could maybe just consider passing. I trade my magnet division for his morale, which would be good. Matter. Okay, Matter's going to pull out. Do not Poison. make me beg. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and play my Stefan. Or my Damon, rather. And he shouldn't be able to do 7 damage to that, so. Let's see how he responds. This probably could play his invocation on potentially. He does invocate it, then we can play the Stefan safely, which is nice. So that's what I'm gonna do. Play the Stefan here. What do you need me to and do? then we're gonna probably consider playing Briar next. So I'll play the Stefan here, try pressure him and force out his packages, because he's gonna be some kind of scenario. Okay, so he locks it. Um, we're gonna play the bribery anyway now, and then we can unlock it any so that's fine. I guess this is okay. Eyes closed. I'm gonna poison this. I'm gonna use this to purify this. So that's fine. This does tell him though that I do have a purify because if he sees me playing this for poison, not for purification, he's gonna know something's up. Um, morale. That's fine. We can poison. We can purify this and un and unlock it, which is great. There's a lot of value on the vine. That's fine. Play Roderick into what? Eh, I could just take the morale too. But if I play take morale, eh, maybe it's fine. A dagger. Poison that. If he doesn't answer my morale, then I can play another. Mor I could play another charge of this and poison him some more, which would be good for me. If he does poison my morale, it means he can't poison my King Co. Oh, my Mega Division, which is also nice. Sort of day the mysteries of this world. Ah, okay. Boundless they are. Um, I guess we pass here. We're up a couple of points. He's got a lot of points to do. You can poison that. That's not enough. He's got a lot of points to do. You can't do one for sure. Okay, so he plays cup bearer. It's not enough. That means you'd have to use lead ability now. If you use lead ability, my bomb heaver kills the scenario, which is great for me. Okay, so he plays a Cynthia, puts some garbage up in my deck, sure. Um, we get leader ability out of him, that's nice. Of course, he is going to top deck into my Damien, so it means I need to try find a lock or Redea, which I should be able to do with a lot of gold. I, I guess I get guaranteed Redea because of Mena Royal Decree. Unless, you know, I have Royal Decree deck, so that's fine. Okay, so he might have the Guardian. Guardian is a bad card. Um, poison is good, I guess. Um... Royal Decree is for Redea. If I'm Mulligan again, I could find my font. Ah, is this hand good enough? Let's get my whisk card. If it's better or worse, we'll see. So you guys got Damien, we can lock the Damien with Royal Decree Meno onto the Redea to lock him. So we can, of course, lock his Here's Damien, and then we do have. As you command. Okay, interesting. Huh? Um, so we'll start with the tortoise. 
And then if he plays his Damien, or should I say my Damien, we can play Royal Decree onto a day and lock it. Hopefully he doesn't have a purifier. He's already used Cup Bear, like one of his few answers for it. Gone. So we play Royal Decree now. Onto Rodea. And we can lock that. Hope he doesn't have a purifier. Let's see. He's already played the Cup Bear, so Chancellor, he won't have a purifier. And then if he doesn't have a leader ability, it means our bomb he just destroys his scenario, which is great for us. Please don't create a purify. Oh, please don't create a purify. For you a very oh, special God, item I have. As a we just get high rolled. Please tell me we didn't get high rolled. Oh no, don't tell me we got high rolled. Okay, at least he can get purify. Okay, I'll live with that then, for sure. Alright, so I'll play the King Cobra then, poison that. And then we have Bomb here for his scenario. I don't even know if he has scenario in hand anymore. Maybe Mulligan, but maybe it's not useful anymore. We'll see. He still has his own Redea, I guess. Can probably create. Shoop. No option. Split 13 damage. He's going for a Hail Mary. Yeah, he's going for Hail Mary. He knows he can't win, so he's going for this. Interesting. Alright, well, that's just a pretty bad shoop. Yeah, he, he yeah, for a Hail Mary yeah. then, you must. Um, that's good for us. We'll do this. This no now message. does um, two damage because only one soldier, so we're just going to kill that. And then we should be perfectly fine here. Yeah. Last card, I don't even have a scenario anymore. Looks like he's. Uh, we just win. Huh? Okay, nice. Alright, let's do one more game and save the boss. Alright, um, Northern Realms, okay, this is one of those interesting matchups because we do want to win round one and push round two, and we do want to use Damien Stefan to try to do that push, so we can probably mulligan with the Bomb Heaver relatively safely, not going to find any value in round one for sure. Um, we do have Poison, that's nice. Um, Lock could be useful, this maybe the weaker card of the hand. Another poison, so in case he's got a purify, I guess we've got three poisons now, so we should always get some poison value. He's playing with the um, engineering solution strategy, and that's interesting. Um, that might signal an engine deck, but I haven't seen engine decks in a while, so probably not, but we'll see. Um, so we'll start off with our own engine, probably Magnet Division, unless you want to answer one of his engines first, which is honestly a valid um, strategy because of the fact that this if this boosts up it's just playing more and more into baron so i, I value just i value disrupting his engines more than i do i value um set up my own engines but um we'll see um i don't really mind him boosting up so i also play this i don't mind him boosting things up with this i'm gonna pull up melee row because some stuff my stuff is roadblock um to ranger like this i don't mind him boosting up stuff because it just plays more into my poisons so that's fine um so i guess next whatever he boosts up with this we'll just poison it with the king cobra Or we just lock it, which is also fine, but we'll see. Okay, Long live okay that's worth, that's definitely worth poisoning, because that's going to grow quite a bit, it's got a lot of arm on it. Um, let's huh? go ahead and poison this. If he does purify it, we have even more poison, so we should always be able to get quite a lot of value, so I'm not too concerned here. Could be even more aggressive. We could play Royal Decree for Morale and try really poison him quite hard this round. Don't know if that's gonna be worth it because using my Royal Decree in round one means I might not find my Damien or Stefan round two, which I really want to find. So I'm not exactly comfortable with that just yet, but we'll see. Have a lot. Okay. It gives me a good morale target. I'll consider it for now. I think we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so, we are ahead of our opponent for now. Um, hmm. The question is, do I want to play Morale this round? <laughs> Not so sure. 
Uh, Meno can be for a 2 inch jars, that's fine because we've got nothing, no other tactics deck anyway, so this looks like a perfectly good Meno to huh? me to kill that. Um, so let's go ahead then and just do this Meno. Could have used to boost this up, but dealing with that is pretty good too. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that, and this Fog will eventually kill this, that's okay. And then we deal with that engine. I'm still trying to figure out why he's running this stratagem, I'm not 100% sure. Could try play to win on even as well. If we win on even, we're pretty happy to. Um, it's looking more and more like he might just go roll the Kree for a um, roll, depending on how he plays here. Especially if it gives me something decent to poison. Using this, yeah, it's interesting. Um, this does give him a pass, if he takes the pass here, I think I'm okay with it. I'm just going to go ahead and lock that, and then I'll play my Tortoise next. And if... Oh, I'll play my Royal Decree for uh, Poison. Uh, Morale Poison. I might do that too. Matter, okay. Okay, so I can play the Recruit now then. Like it does pass, I can always take with the Tortoise. I don't mind if he passes. For now, I really want to win round one. Don't want to go into long round three against a siege deck. This looks like it's a siege deck, and I'd prefer to definitely win round one against that. Or at least force out some big win conditions out of him first. Okay, that's my poison target then, I guess. Let's do this. Particular tastes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he, that way, if he passes, then I can just go ahead and take him for this. I would imagine you should pass on that. That looks very threatening. I could win on even if you're not careful. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we win the round without committing huh? our um, World of Kree, which is nice. And now we do want to push round two because this is going to be a siege deck. And the reason, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the reason specifically you want to push round two, not just specifically because of the fact that he's running what looks to be a siege deck, but because if I play my Dame and my Stefan, he can't answer it without committing, um, without committing his leader onto a dare, which is pretty good for me. So let's go ahead and mulligan away. Ah, uh, that's a soldier, I guess. Um, I can always find a soldier later. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the North Guardian Knight, put another body on the board so that Philippa isn't gonna, you know, high roll my Damien. Then I'll play the Damien, and then he won't be able to kill it without committing leader ability. If he commits leader ability, I'm fine taking a pass because that means he commit over commits the round. And then if he commits leader ability too, just to kill this, means my bomb heaver will be able to answer his scenario. My God, like it's fine. You sure as shit need me. All right, so I'm gonna do this. Vigilance is a I'm boost up twice. Shouldn't be able to kill it without using leader onto Radea and Unsay. If he does that, I'm happy. Only way you can kill this with leader onto Radea and Unsay. Well, only way you can conventionally kill it. Obviously, there are cards like Heatwave and all kinds of weird stuff that could kill this, but. Conventionally speaking, the only way he can kill us is with leader onto Radea and Unseus. And if he does play that, I'm happy. I'll pass. What is he deciding? So he's gonna do it now. That's fine by me. Most leader ability means Bomb Heaver can very easily kill his scenario in round 3. So there's the Unseus, and he's gonna play the Radea too. That's pretty good for me. All this coming out is very, very good. Of course, um, he does kill my Damien. And what's that? Pass here. Yeah. Going to round three. And I have hopefully draw the bomb heave. If I draw the bomb heave, I can deal with the scenario and then I should just be fine. Even, I guess, invocation to some extent also does the same thing. I can find worst case scenario, I invocate the scenario. Well, I prefer to bomb heave it, but invocation is an emergency way to do it. But I hope you can find the bomb heaver. Um, that's not the greatest, but it's a soldier. Definitely mulligan away the fawn. Okay, we got the bomb, but that's great. Which means we can now deal with the scenario pretty easily. Ramon, I guess, can be on that. So I guess we should probably keep this hand. Um, because I need a soldier in hand for Ramon. I guess keep this hand. This hand looks good. Okay, so if you play a scenario, we just bomb him. We are down a card. That's fine. We've got his Rodea and Seis. I don't mind that. Going a card down for that. Good deal by me. I'll take that pass. I will take that pass. In round two, if I had my, um, if I had my invocation, I would have played invocation there. 
to steal his Rodea, but I didn't want to play the Roderick. It was a bit risky, I think. Um, we can still invocate maybe his... Okay, so there's the Sonora. He can't proc with leader ability anymore because he already plays leader ability. So now we can go ahead and just play Bomb Heaver huh? and deal with that. Because he played leader ability in round two, he can't play leader ability onto a Siege Engine to proc this, which means we get insane Bomb Heaver value, which is great for us. Okay, yep. That I don't like. Do, or do I? Maybe I don't care. Ah, I do care a bit. I guess I could do this. History shall remember the art being. And then I can play this and kill it. Because I have two I have a soldier pocket now, which means this can then kill that entirely, which is fine. So we'll play this pikeman in between the soldier pocket here, and then we can kill this, which is nice. Bomb Heaver was great here. Bomb Heaver, the reason we got this Bomb Heaver value is because in round two we forced him to play his Rodea on Seas. Because of that force, because of that we were able to um, get his leader ability out of him, which means he couldn't proc the Sonora, which is huge for us. So we'll do this. What is it now? That. And now we can, I mean, we have Royal Decree for the Stefan. He shouldn't be able to kill it because we can boost it up with the ability. So we should always be very, very okay here. And we can even Royal Decree out. Uh, hmm. I guess we could... <sighs> nah, nah, we just Royal Decree Stefan. Royal Decree Stefan, that's fine. We play, maybe we play Stefan onto a second Royal Decree rather than a Bribery, honestly. There's, on, there's an argument for that, but we'll see. Um, that's a good Rodea lock. We'll just go ahead and lock that. Play the Rodea in range, melee row. Go ahead and kill that with a lock. We've already played the Vincent, so we can't Vincent that, which is nice. And we can, of course, like I said, next turn we're probably going to go Royal Decree onto the Stefan. And he shouldn't be able to kill it due to the fact that he's already used up. His leader ability and says Rodeo combo, so we should be perfectly fine here. Okay, Fannyborn. Okay. Maybe we should go Bribery first. Ah, nah, nah. Let's go Royal Decree. Royal Decree on Stefan. Um, boost it up. May as well. Boost up more. Just Play around some kind of crazy Philippa roll. Put this on top of our decks that comes out because when you put this card on the top of your deck, it comes it moves straight onto the board as we discussed. And we're up a couple of points, and we still have Stefan, which is gonna do a huge amount of points. Um so we play the bribery and, and we'll see what we get with it. Armor's pretty good for me. Um so like I said, we could go roll the Cree Stefan now for a morale. Honestly, that's pretty good. But Philippa could kill it, so maybe we just uh, maybe we play Roderick first so we can get the morale. Yeah, let's play the Roderick first, honestly. Duncan! In my trade, I am and then we'll play Bribery last with the Stefan, which is great. And then we should always win here by quite a few points. His last cards are like Philippa and I don't know, some bronze most likely. But we should always beat that. If you can't kill my this isn't even gonna be easy for him to kill. Unless he's got like a um boiling oil in hand. And if he does, I don't really mind too much. So I expect these last two cards to be Philippa and something else. I'm not sure what the something else is, but we'll see. It's taking a long time to think about this. I wonder what he's considering here. Sequencing at this point in the game should be pretty straightforward. Um, only two cards left, so... Maybe he's decided he wants to go for the fill on this or this. Unlikely he's going to kill either. Okay, so he hits a bunch of... Oh, it's a very bad fill up. We've got a bit unlucky there, but it shouldn't really matter. So we'll do that. Play the bribery. Yeah, those aren't the greatest options. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, GG. GG, there you have it. Um, like I said, the push in round two was great for us. We recognized that in this matchup, if you push in round two with Damien, they can't really deal with it unless they commit their win condition. If they do commit that, you can just pass. So keep that in mind. That is a very, very strong play you can do in this, this deck. 
push round two with Damien, and a lot of decks don't have a way of dealing with it without using their leader ability. And if they use their leader ability to kill it, you're often very happy with just passing. Um, so great example of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide. Um, if you guys have any questions about it, do ask in the description or the comment section below. I'm more than happy to try answer it or come by my stream. I stream every day. Um, my link for that will be in the description below. And you, can, you can come by and ask me more questions if you want. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide. And hope you guys have success with this deck. See you guys again next time. Bye-bye, guys.